Hello geometry students. Today I want to talk to you about how to break down a word problem. So let's get started. So for the first thing that you want to notice about this word problem is that there are no pictures in this word problem. So a lot of you will read a word problem, you will get scared, and you will just stop doing it. You will click a random button and go to the next one. However, if you use that strategy in the end of course exam, you will more than likely not pass. You know that passing the end of course exams are graduation requirements. So we really want to make sure that we try hard, we read the questions, and I want you to not be afraid of word problems anymore. Also, the ones with no pictures are generally the easier ones because they know that you have to draw the picture and then solve it instead of just spending all your time solving it. So let's take a look at this one. It says the bottom of a ladder is placed three feet from a wall. The ladder is 12 feet long. How far above the ground does the ladder hit the wall? So let's start breaking this word problem down. The first thing that you want to think about is what is the important information? So let's start at the word problem. The bottom of a ladder. I think that the fact that we have a ladder is very important because ladder problems are all the same. You solve them all the same. I guarantee you that you will probably see one of these problems on the end of course exam. So I'm just going to highlight the word ladder. The next thing I want to do is it's placed three feet from the wall. A lot of times the numbers are very important and that's what you want to focus on. The ladder is 12 feet long. How far above the ground does the ladder hit the wall? So that's our three pieces of important information. So I'm just going to rewrite these. So on your paper and pen that you have out, you want to make sure that you write down these key points. If you need to pause this video now to make sure that you will get your paper and pen and that you can write this down, pencil of course because it is math class, then you can go do that and then come back. So once you're back, make sure that you have these three key pieces of information down. Three, three pieces right here. So the next step we want to do is we want to actually draw the picture ourselves. So we have a ladder that is placed against a wall. So I'm just going to draw a ladder against a wall. So here is my picture. Now let's look at our information. The ladder is three feet from the wall. So down here I'm going to write three feet. Then we have a 12 foot ladder. This part right here is our ladder, so that's 12 feet. So here is our picture. I am now going to move on to the next slide just so we can see this. The first thing I want to think is what do I notice about this picture? What shape is this? What polygon has three sides? A triangle. Good job. So, what specifically, specifically what type of triangle is this? This is a right triangle. What do we think about when we think of a right triangle? Think about it, and we'll get back to that in a moment. Our next step that we want to figure out is, what exactly are we solving for? So normally what we're solving for is the last question. The last sentence in the whole thing is normally what we're trying to figure out. How far above the ground does the ladder hit the wall? That is what we're solving for. How far above the ground does the ladder hit the wall? I'm trying to figure out how high this is. So I want this entire length right here. We're going to call that X. All right, so this is the piece right here that we are going to call X. Now, we're going to think for right triangles. What formulas do we normally think about for right triangles? Think about some of the things that we did with triangles. So when we think right triangles, we should think Pythagorean theorem. What is the Pythagorean theorem? This is on your reference sheet that you do get for the end of course exam, but this is a theorem that you really should have memorized because it's not too difficult. And the theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we want to figure out what a, b, and c are. What is c? c is your hypotenuse. Very good. Don't forget that hypotenuse is the side that's across from the right angle or it is your largest side. If you have all three, then you want to worry about the fact that that's the largest side. If you only have two numbers, please do not think that the largest number is always the hypotenuse. So. In this case, which one's across from the right angle? My right angle's over here. What's all the way across from it? 12. So 12 is going to be the hypotenuse. That's going to go where C is. So make sure that you do not put it on the same side of the equation as A and B. Next, I told you that we're going to call this X over here. So our two legs, because remember our vocabulary, the two sides that are not the hypotenuse are called the legs. Our A, or our, sorry, X and 3. So we have 3 squared plus x squared equals 12 squared. Remember, it does not matter which one of these is a and b. I could also have x squared plus 3 squared equals 12 squared, and it would be the same exact problem. So now, what is 3 squared? 
9. Very good. Make sure that you do not put 6 because 3 squared means 3 times 3. It does not mean 3 times 2. So we have 9. What is 12 squared? 144. Very good job, guys. So now I have 9 plus x squared equals 144. This is now just an algebra problem that you should know how to solve because you guys are already past algebra 1, hopefully. So now we want to solve for x. What is on the same side of the equation as x that we would like to move over? I have my squared and I have my 9. The first thing I want to get rid of is my 9. Is that a positive or negative 9? It's a positive 9. Very good. If I don't see a sign in front of it, I know it's positive. So how do I move this 9 over here? I have to do the opposite. What's the opposite of positive? Negative. So subtract 9 from both sides. What is 144 minus 9? If you said 135, you are correct. So now we have x squared equals 135. What happens when I have x squared? How do I get x by itself? Let's think about it like this. What is the opposite of squaring something? What is the opposite of x squared? I take the square root of that. So I am going to take the square root of both of these terms. The square root of x squared is just x. The square root of 135 is 100 is 11.62. It's actually 11.618 something, but normally you're asked to round to one or two places after the decimal. Make sure that rounding, you know that this last number that you put, it matters about the number after it. So it was 618, but since 8 is bigger than 5, I made sure I did 11.62. That is your final answer. That is how far away from the ladder, or how far away from the ground the ladder hits the wall. So this is how you did a word problem. As you can see, they're not too scary, and I just wanted to kind of show you guys how to do them. So here's one that I want you guys to try. Be careful though, notice this is multiple choice. You do not want to even look at the multiple choice answers until you have completed the rest of the problem. So you want to solve it yourself and then you want to look at the multiple choice answers. So go ahead and good luck.